Hey folks, in today's video, we are indeed installing one of these, a water manifold system for the plumbing here in my Jayco Pinnacle fifth wheel. But before we do that, let me explain a little bit about why I'm doing this. Because for me personally, I've never intended to install one of these on an RV that I've owned. I've seen them in higher end fifth wheels. A lot of class A's have them as well, but I've never thought to myself, you know, that looks like a great project with a lot of benefits. Let me put that on my list of things to do. So let me share a little bit of the backstory of why I'm installing this on my fifth wheel. So all of this started when I had the desire to install a very specific product here in my basement storage, different than the water manifold, and I simply did not have room for this product. Now it's a product that has tremendous practical benefits and solves a lot of problems, so I'm gonna do that in a different video. But let me show you a little bit more about what I'm talking about and give you some before shots. So we are on the campsite of my RV here. This is my main basement storage, and I've got the access panel slid open. And check out inside here all the spaghetti. And most of it is actually plumbing. I mean, when I bought this thing, I went through and tried to tidy up the electrical as best I could and kind of wrap things together, but I never really got to the plumbing side. And I mean, you can see we've got all kinds of fresh water lines feeding fixtures. Then there are the black tank flush lines and then the fresh water fill that runs to the tank toward the back. And so I mean, we've got just water lines all over the place. Let me show you the other side here so you can get a better idea. And I mean, they're just going every which direction. And so my goal is to clean this up because I want to put something right here. And you can see there's just not space. There's water lines. There's actually some black gas lines feeding the water heater and the furnace up there. And so my goal is to get all this tidied and cleaned up as best that I can. Now you might be wondering why go through all the trouble to tidy and clean up these plumbing lines. I mean, after all, if it works, what's really the, the purpose beyond tidying it? And yeah, I mean, all my lines are functional. There's no leaks or anything. I mean, looking at all this here, the only problem that I see initially is if you can see back here, there's a vacuum breaker that's kind of at an angle. Actually, it's almost horizontal. And this vacuum breaker is part of the water lines that feed the black tank flush. So this is my sewer going from the toilet just above here. And so the black tank is right here. And then there's a black tank flush, of course, that runs to the back of the Nautilus panel. And so that vacuum breaker is part of the code to make sure that you know no sewage from that sewage black tank down here could make its way up back through that water line and then eventually get back to the hose that's connected to the black tank flush. But it's my understanding that these vacuum breakers function in part by gravity. And so they're actually supposed to be upright. So you can see this one is actually almost horizontal. I've got the camera pretty much level and you can see it's, you know, maybe at, I don't know, a 30 degree angle but it's supposed to be upright. So that's one thing from a functional standpoint that I do wanna fix as I do all this, but I mean, check out all the, the zigzagging. I mean, this thing goes all the way through here, then it zigzags up and down through there. And it just, it's all over the place. It just, to me, visually is not uh, very pleasing to, to look at. So, I mean, part about cleaning this up is, yes, I wanna fix that aspect there with the vacuum breaker, but also just from a visual standpoint, I don't know, it's kind of therapeutic <laughs> for me. That may sound a little bit weird, but to clean all this up and make it look nice, uh, there's just a certain amount of, of satisfaction that I get from, from doing something like that. And I guess another goal to mention, in addition to just getting all this cleaned up, the visual appeal, you know, and maybe the serviceability, getting easier access to things, another goal would be to get these water lines that supply the hot and cold to different fixtures in the RV, to get these water lines up closer to the actual heated living space up here. So you can see this is the floor deck. Above here is the bathroom, of course, and then behind me is the master bedroom bedroom. And then down below here, of course, we've got our tanks. I mean, this is pretty much the underbelly and the drop frame section. And below the tanks, that's it. Then you're outside. And so right now, this is where the water lines start. This blue and red here, that's where all the water gets supplied from. And you can see it runs directly along the floor, and then it picks up and goes to the, the kitchen there. This, of course, over here is where the drop frame section ends, and it's just the standard fr 
frame and then you can see it goes up to the bathroom to the toilet and the sink and then last over there is what feeds the washer and dryer and so all that is really down lower where it could potentially be maybe a little bit cooler you know i'm thinking heat rises and such and so I'd rather have vulnerable things that could freeze up here closer to the living space as opposed to down here where it could get, you know, a little bit cooler. And so that's kind of another goal to get all these water lines, as many of them as I can up here along the, the ceiling up here on the floor deck above so that they're perhaps a little bit warmer in the cooler months. And then last goal I'll mention, this one's really more of a proactive one. And that is, you know, what if I'm out camping somewhere and I start to have problems with one of the fixtures connected to my water supply. For example, I've got this outdoor spray port over here. And so when I'm connected to city water, this is 100% pressurized. There's no on off switch. So what if this started to leak, maybe on the outside or maybe on the inside, then in order to contain that leak, I'd have to shut off the water completely that feeds the whole coach. I don't have an option to shut off just the outdoor spray port right here. And so that kind of got me thinking, you know, I've seen some pretty high end coaches. One that comes to mind is DRV where down here in the basement storage in your wet bay, they've got a full water manifold system where you can shut off individually different fixtures. And it's my understanding, I think they do that for pretty much every fixture in the RV. So you might have, you know, seven different valves times two with the hot and cold combined. So you might have 14 different valves to be able to individually turn off everything from your kitchen sink to your dishwasher to, you know, your bathroom faucet versus the toilet versus the shower and so forth. I don't quite have the room to do something like that in here because it's just a little bit more compact. But what I did settle on is something over here from Viega. They're probably the premier makers of these modular manifold systems for homes. And this one is kind of in their mini series. It's a mini block versus their mana block, which are the larger full ones. And you can see one difference here with the mini blocks is that the hot and cold are all kind of combined together in a single unit versus a full-fledged manifold where you're gonna have a double you know, column here on both sides, one for the hot and one for the cold. So you can see right here, I've got a total of seven, four cold and three hot. And I settle on this really because it's pretty compact. I mean, right here from left to right, it's only about 15 inches overall. And you know, I just don't have a lot of space down here in the basement where I could afford something that's you know 24 inches tall if I went with a full-fledged unit right here. So you might be thinking, well, what's the purpose if you only have four cold and three hot? I mean, what benefit is this really gonna do for you? Well, for me, I'm basically going to kind of by zone incorporate this. So I'll have one that feeds the kitchen. And of course, that'll technically feed the dishwasher as well. And then another one that'll feed the main bathroom, right? I only have one bathroom in this coach. And that includes the vanity faucet, the uh, shower, of course, and the toilet. And then the last one will be for the washer dryer. So that'll, that'll kind of be my three zones. And then it's nice that they give you a fourth cold one here because then I can use that fourth cold one for the outdoor spray port over there. So that's my plan to use this thing. This is a, a kind of a modular thing that you buy where they put these together and they give you, you know, a certain number of hot and cold and it's really kind of neat. And then of course you get a little key right here. I'm probably gonna lose this. They got a little hole that it kind of fits in right here, but I think I'm gonna try to attach this some other way. But they give you this little key that kind of latches onto that little diamond and then it's just a, a standard you know ball valve inside of here that's going to be shutting off what feeds all this but i like this because these are all half inch which is already what we've got on the rv this is very compact and so i think it's going to solve you know not just the ability for me to be able to shut off by zone but also kind of make things look a little bit neater and so that is my goal to use this guy right here now let me give you some close-up views of the different connections on this water manifold system so i mentioned earlier that it's already plumbed for half inch and i should clarify that it's not that you can screw on you know a half inch thread here it's my understanding that these are all proprietary but they give you this right here and you can see there's an o-ring down there that slides into here and then it threads on there and this right here is a barbed half inch connector for pex so you know most rvs already have half inch pex in them like mine and so this is perfect but you just cinch this down and it's got an o-ring in there and then of course you're going to use you know regular half inch pex with the stainless steel rings to go onto these barbs here. And so that's the same for all seven of these. And then as far as the inlets that feed the 
the actual manifold again this is proprietary so you can't just go out and buy you know something that's going to screw on here you have to buy it from viega and they've got a few different kind of variations but this is what it looks like i went for the ones that have a, a plastic barb connector up here this is three force i think if i remember right you can get this in three force or one inch up here and so you know i just need three force given it's just an rv but then this is all proprietary so again it's got an o-ring inside of there that slides down onto there and then of course you just tighten down this threaded connection here so this is going to feed my hot water and you know again it's modular so you can kind of see how they put this together and then there's like a plate you know that separates these three chambers from these four down here and then of course you got the same thing down on this side you've got another connector and so i'll put the cold water and supply it through there so i mean i think it's really neat that for the size of this they were able to get all these ports in there. I mean, if I was to try to make this myself out of a standard copper manifold, this would be at least twice the size because by the time you put all the valves and everything, you know, twice the size, plus it'd be a lot more connectors. I mean, this is all one piece basically right here. So I don't have to worry about extra connectors, extra space, you know, extra parts that might fail. So I think it's really neat what Viega has done here. Again, this is in their mini block series. All right, so those are the goals for this project. And let me just clarify that all this started not because I was having problems back here with anything, you know, any of the water lines and such. All this started because I want to install something back here that I just don't have the room and clearance for because of the way the water lines are just kind of all over the place, kind of a spaghetti mess right now. So that's what got all this going. And then I, you know, tacked on some other goals in the, the process. But after this plumbing project is done in another video, I plan to install something back there. By the way, if you have any guesses on what it is, certainly drop me a comment below. And speaking of which, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I think you're gonna find it very interesting and helpful what I plan to install back here in another video. So I'm gonna get started on revamping all this plumbing to get it wrapped up. And I'd love to take you along on that journey, but there is not the best lighting back here, not the best angles. And quite frankly, it's gonna take me some time to to plan out the most efficient path for all these different you know water lines and such and so i'm going to be going back and forth a lot i think it's probably going to be a little boring if i tried to record it so instead i'm just going to let you see the before here you can see all the spaghetti mess and then with the magic of video editing i'll take you from the before here to the after so check this out this is after the project is complete after i've done all the mods you can see the water manifold system back there and i'll give you some close-up views of that but i'll just say off the bat it didn't turn out quite as you know neat and orderly as i envisioned it would be beforehand uh, and you know it's really just tough when you're working in such a tight small space like that you know i'd envision all the plumbing lines being parallel to one another and it just didn't quite turn out that way but it definitely is a lot neater I definitely freed up a lot of space. So first up, let me give you some close-up views of the water manifold itself, because I imagine that's what most of you are interested in. And I am gonna talk about a little bit later, something I would do a little bit differently concerning the positioning. But I chose to put the manifold back here. I already had this piece of upright plywood that's actually supporting the furnace, believe it or not, that's up above the water here that's just tucked behind here. So this piece of plywood was already here and it just seemed like a natural spot that I could mount the water manifold so I did put it there it is kind of a little bit difficult to reach from this side of the access panel you can see it's a little bit more head-on from this side over here but you can see there everything's nice and neatly labeled you've got three hot on the top there and then four cold on the bottom of course you can see with the Viega product you've got this little key here and so you just put that on the valve that you want to shut off and it's just a quarter turn so right now it's on and if I just turn it like that it turns that particular one off there just as easy as that I did end up putting a little wire on this little key because they intended you to put this right up here it was right where one of the labels goes and plus I was afraid I would lose that so I got it on a little key right there and that way 
I won't lose it. But I mean, this is really neat because now I can turn off all these different zones in the RV. I've got my bathroom on a zone, the washer dryer, and then the kitchen. And then I've got a fourth cold one down here for the spray port that's on my, my campsite. So it's really neat how everything's organized. You can see at the top, the hot water supply comes in. And then on the bottom down here, the cold water supply comes in. So it's really very simple and straightforward. And then it just branches off to all those individual zones, kind of like a, a circuit breaker, essentially. And here's some close-up shots from another angle so you can see how everything connects to the water manifold real nice and neat. But uh, this project was pretty involved. I mean, all together from start to finish, I think it took me probably about eight hours in total, kind of broken up among three or four days. That might seem like a lot of time, but remember I wasn't just installing the water manifold. I was cleaning up all of the spaghetti, all of the mess. In fact, let me just pan around so you can see how much more space I freed up by revamping really the entire plumbing system that's all in this mechanical basement area. And I'll try to put up some footage of the before so you can see side by side. But I mean, check out all this space down here, especially below this BM Pro node, how much space is freed up back here with me redoing all that plumbing. I mean, this was all before just a mess of different plumbing lines. I bet you you could fit back here if you wanted probably six 100 amp hour lithium batteries, you know, stacked up if you wanted to. I mean, that's how much space was occupied here, which is really wasted. And so it just looks a whole lot cleaner. But let me walk you through the connections and kind of how I revamped all this. You know, of course, everything starts with the water manifold system here. And like I said before, you've got the cold supply going into it at the bottom and then the hot on top. So that's pretty straightforward. And basically what I did is I had to then rerun with fresh PEX lines, all the cold and hot lines that you're seeing and basically pick them up to the furthest point that I could reach. So for example, you can see going back in here, I've got a hot and a cold. These are my lines feeding the kitchen island inside the coach. And so basically I snipped them off right about here and then picked them up back to the water manifold system. Kind of same story up above here. On the other side of this floor deck is the, the bathroom. And so again, there's you know three separate sources. There's the toilet, the shower, and the vanity sink. So same story, I just picked those up. And I'll talk a little bit more about those valves that you're seeing up there in just a little bit. But if you remember in the before footage, I said another goal was I wanted to get the lines off of the floor here where you know it's kind of more extreme to the outside where it's colder and get those lines up closer to the actual living space up here where it's heated. And I thought maybe doing that would help by a few degrees perhaps in some cold temperatures. So you can see I did accomplish that. I got all these lines up off the floor. They're all mounted up here on the underside of the, the floor deck. And you know, overall, I think everything turned out pretty nice. Now let me speak to why I chose this specific model water manifold that has the three hot and the four cold. So a total of seven ports. Because if you're doing the math, you'll notice that I have more than three hot fixtures in the RV and I've got more than four cold fixtures in the RV. So you might be wondering, what is the point of having a water manifold system where you're supposed to be able to turn off you know, individual fixtures in your RV from a single source. What is the point of having a water manifold system like I've got if you can't actually do that? So let me talk through why I settled on this specific model. It's really more of a zoned approach and I'll speak to that a little bit later in the video. But we'll start out here at the top. You can see the first one is the, the bathroom hot and then I've got a corresponding one down here that's the bathroom cold. So obviously in the bathroom, I've got a shower I've got a vanity sink, and then I've got a toilet. Now in my case, my toilet has a bidet, and so it's got a hot and cold line running to it, which is a little bit out of the ordinary. So basically I've got three hot and three cold fixtures in the bathroom, yet I've only got one hot and one cold here on the water manifold system. So let me show you how I worked that. You'll notice that off of that hot branch right here, it goes up here and tees off, and then we've got a separate valve right here. Now I've labeled all these to make it real easy to service later, 
But notice how I added then another shutoff valve right here. This is just a real simple ball valve. Now some RV brands are actually starting to do this where they'll put these service valves, these ball valves kind of in line on the PEX without doing a full water manifold, but at least that way you can shut off some of the individual fixtures. You know, you might have to go down to the basement storage like we're down here or somewhere else, but you can at least shut them off. And so this approach I think makes a lot of sense when you're doing a zoned system. And again, I'll talk about the benefits of that a little bit later in the video. But basically, notice how on this hot branch I've got one for the shower. And if we follow it all the way up here, you can see it tees off again. And we've got then one going to the vanity and then another one back here going to the toilet, to the bidet right there. And it's the same story for the cold. So you can see everywhere there's a valve, there's going to be one for the hot and one for the cold. And so this way, effectively, you know, I've got one channel right here, one terminal on the water manifold, hot and cold for the bathroom for that particular zone. But then if I need to shut off just the shower, I can still do that using these ball valves up here. And same story on the vanity, same story there with the toilet. So for me, this kind of solves that problem. Then as far as the other ports on the water manifold system, I've got a hot and a cold dedicated to the kitchen zone. Now in the kitchen, all I have is a kitchen sink in the island and then a dishwasher. And so that dishwasher is sharing the hotline that's running to the kitchen, but it actually has its own shutoff valve under the island there for servicing. And so basically it's sharing that hotline there, but I can turn off the dishwasher if I need to. Otherwise, if I turn it off here at the water manifold, it's gonna cut the water for both the sink and the dishwasher. On the cold side for the kitchen, it's just the sink. So that one's pretty straightforward. And then I've got a separate hot and cold for the washer dryer combo in the front of my coach in the front bedroom there. And that's pretty much dedicated there. I also have shutoff valves, of course, at the uh, actual washer there. And then the last one down here, I like how they gave me a fourth cold. You know, I've got three hot, Instead of having three cold, I've actually got a fourth one. And that's really handy in my case because I have a spray port on the outside of my RV on the campsite. And so if I ever have any problems with that one, this fourth one is dedicated just to that cold water spray port on that side. And then if you're paying attention, there is one other fixture that I have not mentioned so far that is completely left out of the water manifold system here, and that is the outdoor shower. You know, for most RVs, it's in the wet bay area. And so right here, you're looking at the back side of the Nautilus panel right here. And so that outdoor shower is just on the opposite side of this wall. And for me, in my case, the way everything was plumbed together from the factory, that outdoor shower was kind of incorporated already into the plumbing that feeds that Nautilus system. And if you've ever taken a close up look at the back of those Nautilus panels, they're pretty complex. There's a lot of different lines going to different things. And I opted to leave that as is. I mean, I certainly could have capped off where the outdoor shower hooks up there. There's a hot and a cold and then could have incorporated into one of these zones. And maybe I'll do it in the future. If I did, I'd probably do it on the, the outdoor spray port and then take the hot off one of the other ones. But for now, I'm gonna leave it as is. You know, it's a pretty short distance from where it connects up to the Nautilus system there, the hot and the cold on that outdoor shower, pretty low risk. And so I'm just gonna leave that one as is. But for those interested, that one is one that I did leave out of the water manifold system here. Now entirely separate from the water manifold system, if you remember in the before footage, there was a ton of blue pecs in here that all had to do with the black tank flush down here. My black tank is directly below here and it was all just a spaghetti mess. It was probably the messiest part of this whole space right here. So I did rework all that plumbing as well and I actually opted to do it in white pecs. And that way I could really tell the difference between these blue and red lines for the hot and cold and then I've got my black tank flush back there. So I took out everything with the black tank flush all the way going back to the Nautilus panel and redid all that. So you can see it kind of goes up around here. Again, I wanted to kind of go up to the ceiling to keep things out of the way. And then it bends back around here and you can see if I get a little bit closer, that vacuum breaker that's at the top there. Now, I didn't talk about this in the before video, but it's my understanding that that vacuum breaker, not only does it need to be vertical because it's gravity fed, but it's my understanding that typically you're gonna find that vacuum breaker up there in a vanity cabinet in your bathroom because technically the vacuum breaker is supposed to be at or above the highest fixture 
that is connected to the black tank or whatever you're feeding off of that particular line. So in my case, you know, my toilet is just above here. And so technically, you know, there's a valve on that toilet that's pretty close to the top of the seat, uh, the lid on that to toilet. And so technically that vacuum breaker, I think is supposed to be up higher than the top of the toilet. And that's why in most RVs, you're gonna find that vacuum breaker in your vanity cabinet in your bathroom. I think this is the first RV where that vacuum breaker has not been in that location. So for whatever reason, Jacob put it down here and, and I'm really okay with it. I did notice that they ran lots of up and down when they had it all you know, in here with the spaghetti mess. And so I kept that loop. So it does come up here and then I dropped all the way down and kept that loop and then went back up to the vacuum breaker and then back down to where it actually connects to the black tank flush, kind of the inlet here on my, my black tank. But I like this a lot better because I can easily get in here and service that vacuum breaker if I ever need to. You know, it's accessible there. Everything's, you know, mounted securely. Of course, it's labeled. And uh, it just looks a whole lot neater to me having it tucked out of the way right there. And uh, really just opens up all this, this space here that was occupied by it before. And then the last plumbing line that I modified in this project was the freshwater tank line. And that actually comes out of the back of the Nautilus panel two right here. You can see it's this blue line that's going up. And you know, before they basically just took the shortest path and cut right across here and kind of zigzag. And then it chases right here all the way back to the, the freshwater tank. Mine's kind of more in the rear of the coach uh, behind the axles. But I basically just started a fresh right there off the Nautilus system and instead I went up again right here to keep everything out of the way you know I probably added about oh maybe five or six feet of PEX line to that fresh water line that's running there but it just looks a whole lot neater you know keeping it all out of the way and then I hooked back up to it right there where it chases back to the tank now I want to address one objection that I anticipate some might have with a plumbing project like you've seen here today you know perhaps an RV manufacturer or even an RV service tech but I'm running out of time in today's video it's getting a bit lengthy and so what I'm going to do is a part two next week where I talk about that one objection and then also I want to hit three important considerations if you're considering a water manifold system in your RV. And then I also want to talk pros and cons with a water manifold system specifically in the context of an RV. So if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. You're definitely going to want to check out next week's video. In fact, one of the cons that I'm going to mention is often overlooked when it comes to a water manifold system in an RV. And it's one that really can significantly impact your experience uh, as an RV or especially if you're dry camping. So definitely stay tuned for next week's video. If you're watching this months down the road, I'll put a link at the end of the video along with in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.